This is an intro. Intro, intro, intro. Hustle and Float Shark with your boy, my boy, Matt Wolf and Joe Fair. Hey! Yo, yo. Welcome to another podcast episode of the Hustle and Flow Chart podcast. This is Joe Fear. <laughs> Matt Wolf here. I say podcast too much. You do. Sorry, I get too excited. <laughs> I'm on recording. Okay, so today we have Dan Brock. He is nicknamed the Super, sorry, Deadbeat Super Affiliate. Yep. Um, he has quite the image if you ever Google his image or if you see him looking at our show notes. He's always in a bathrobe. He's in a bathrobe and it's funny because his feet always had these socks that have like another foot hanging off of sock <laughs> and like literally he showed up to some of our like brewing events in san diego dressed like this i'm just like <laughs> everybody's like who the hell is this guy don't worry about it <laughs> <laughs> so in this episode i mean this guy's like a youtube ninja oh yeah and we're not talking youtube ads or any of that scary stuff that gets complicated literally is just shooting simple videos and then guess what he's not even selling his own products he's selling affiliate products yes and it's amazing. And you're going to learn step by step on how exactly he does this with literally step by step and specifics. So get ready to take some notes. Yeah, this is this is literally a tutorial on how to create really simple YouTube videos and earn affiliate revenue off of them over and over and over again. And Dan is just killing it doing this. Um, he kind of gave us some behind the scenes numbers and holy crap, he's doing some big numbers doing this stuff. So exciting stuff. And he yeah. breaks down the entire process. Literally the generous dude <laughs> teaches you a, basically a masterclass on this totally. in this call. So let's go ahead and dive in with Dan Brock. See ya. All right, Dan, thanks for copping on, copping on, hopping on. I'm first one of the day, man. First podcast. You Joe know? hasn't had enough coffee yet. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going? What's going on, man? What's up, guys? It's Joe and Matt. Uh, thanks for having me on your podcast. Really ready to. Uh, uh, I was taking a nap and I heard their Skype <laughs> message pop up, and I was like, "Oh, oh crap! We got a we got a podcast today. Awesome! Let's do it." <laughs> well, you had a different response, but we won't see what that response was. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well what, what, what's your brand name again? Oh uh, yeah, my my, my name is Dan Brock, the Deadbeat Super Affiliate. So, so the um, Deadbeat Super world. Affiliate kind of uh, you, you know it off. fits right in there. You kind yeah, of yeah, off, you know, napping and all. It's it's good. It's all good. <laughs> It's all good. <laughs> so what what time do you start your day, Deadbeat? Uh, you know, I've been pretty good recently. Um, I've been waking up around 11 a.m. Uh, <laughs> That's doing good. And um, you took you know, a nap. I try to aim for 2 p.m. is like my typical typical day. Nice. And then you're napping after that. I mean, actually, oh, you're, yeah. you're ahead on your nap schedule today. So. Yeah, usually I wake up, eat breakfast, um, do a little bit of work, take a nap, and then just repeat that cycle. Nice. I mean, that's, that's. I would love to do that. <laughs> what is uh? What is your? What is your? What are your guys' cycles like? Well, once you have a wife and kids and stuff, things change a little bit. Well, so that's the caveat. Yeah, <laughs> I'm usually up and going at around ten. I mean, well, I mean, I'm I'm already up by then, but actually work mode ten yeah. o'clock. Yeah, I'm usually up at about seven a.m. at my computer about ten a.m. Uh, in bed by about ten thirty or eleven. <laughs> Dang, you guys are hustlers, man. <laughs> we're well, we're I, old men. Well, I don't think he's working the entire freaking day. That would be bad. Oh, no, no. When I say in bed by 10, I'm usually done working like 5.30 or 6 and then just watching Netflix or something until 10.30. Matt's a nerd, though. He's always kind of working in some some fashion. Yeah. What do you guys but, think of those dudes that wake up like 4 and 5 a.m.? Uh, I sh I'm kind of envious of like a morning person, to be honest. Not that early, though. That's just ridiculous. Yeah. That's like my stepdad. That's that's like real work when you have to go to a job. Like, nah. Um, yeah, I wouldn't do that by choice. I'm cool with six if I can get to bed early, you know. But I don't know, man. Yeah, it's different scenarios for everyone, I guess. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's an important topic, though. Morning yeah. schedule. Uh, when it you wake is. up, that routine is important for sure as an entrepreneur. For sure. Yeah. I mean, that's brilliant. Because yeah, I mean, we've had episodes about our morning routine, and uh, yeah, I mean, we we're we're pretty routine. It's just. Uh, we we get up, you know. We don't we don't get up at eleven. Unfortunately, I wish I, I still could. I when I was in uh, high school, yeah. that was like my weekend schedule. I'd get up at eleven and then stay up till two a.m. Hell yeah, that's what's <laughs> up. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, no, I, I, I yeah. Part of me wishes I could do that. But I'm like, man, I like the morning though because like no one's awake and then you're just like it's freaking quiet. Yeah, but that's why I like the middle of the night. That's why I work till like two a.m. because that's what that's the quiet time for me. I know it is. I mm -hmm. Yeah, I like the I like the two a.m. hour. Just, uh, <laughs> it's pretty good. Everything's clear minded and all that. You're more clear at that time than uh, well. You take so many damn naps, so it makes <laughs> sense. Yeah, yeah, that's what that's what I'm coming around the peak productivity around two a.m. at night, just ready to go after uh, 
all those naps and all <laughs> that i mean that makes sense so you're a deadbeat during the day but i mean at least it seems that way but yeah you're yeah, hustling, yeah dude well let's yeah, you gotta do what you gotta do well let's uh let's let's go back to how you actually got into to marketing and business and kind of tell that story real quick uh yeah well I've, I've, I've been doing this for a long time uh started in 2000 so um there were, so i don't know how many years ago that was whether it be like 18, 19, 18 20 years, years ago, ago whatever that, whatever that is um yeah there was this video game called diablo 2 are you guys familiar with that game i definitely yeah. am yes i was so a computer there, nerd. there was a uh, item there was this you know remember that boss mephisto oh i don't remember like the details of the game but i do remember <laughs> playing the game so there was one boss in there where if you geared if you geared your uh sorceress the right way you could kill that boss single ha- single handedly in, in hell mode, and, and that boss would drop crazy gear. <laughs> and I would get, I would, I would go and do these Mephisto runs, and I would collect that gear and sell it on eBay. Oh man, so, that's um, awesome! Wow, you know, those would be fifty dollars. You know, some of those helmets and crap that would drop like fifty bucks, sixty bucks each. So each run would be like on average a hundred dollars. It'd take like fifteen twenty minutes, um, <laughs> uh, you know, a little longer sometimes. But uh, that's how I got started. So I started selling on eBay. From there, I started a web hosting company that did pretty well. Uh, I screwed that up because I was, um, you know, it was it was really successful. But uh, I was like 17 at the time, and I was also doing like uh, high uh, high school. That I would be at high school full time there, so <laughs> I just kind of burnt myself to the ground. You know what I mean? Because you don't have so much time today. What did you do with that company? You just let it die, sell it? Yeah, it just kind of died out. Um, you know, like I, it, it, at the peak, it was so awesome. Um, it just, really just grew too fast. I learned that lesson on that everyone wants to like explode overnight that's really not a healthy thing Hmm. especially when it comes to like a web hosting company where you have servers you need staff all that needs to be done systematically so um it just blew up it was literally like overnight within a month period it went from like 500 customers like three i think it was like 250 customers this is a while ago so Mm -hmm. don't quote me on the specifics it was like i had 250 paying customers and all of a sudden the thing blew up I, I, within a month, I signed like a fifteen hundred new customers within a month. So <laughs> Jeez, that's a lot school. of growth. That's a ton of growth. It's like five to, I think it was like seven new servers I had to buy. I had to hire two tech support people. Um, I didn't know how to handle people as far as you know working online. Um, it became a, a cluster f. Yeah, pretty quick. Damn, in high school, that's blowing me away right now. <laughs> yeah, well, there's like so many. That's nothing because nowadays there's like. 10 year old kids are dropping off programs and video games like they're nothing. So That's it's like true. we're almost, we're, we're like dinosaurs compared to the, the new crop of kids coming up. We totally are, man. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that's a, I mean, that's, that's crazy. I didn't know that's how you got into it all. Yeah, no, I I, I love the the story about the Diablo thing too. I mean, that, that was some big money. I mean, I think still to this day, that's big money in like World of Warcraft, Warcraft and shit, yeah. right? Yeah, I think so. They have like the Counter Strike gear. I think is what's hot now. I, I don't know. Uh, I'm not, I haven't really been in that scene, but there are these big network sites that um, they sell this gear. I forget the name of it. It's Counter Strike. I think is what it is. Yeah, but they have like whole farms of people like over in like China and the Philippines and stuff. That like that is their job. There's just like a hundred people in a almost like a sweatshop type environment playing video <laughs> games and collecting shit. <laughs> Yeah, they were sweatshirt. saying that there was a jail, uh, a jail forced their prisoners to do it, kind of off the off the uh, off the record. So to, there's to this make jail set these computers up and had these um, Chinese prisoners do it. Damn, that is gnarly. I guess it's better than lifting rocks and you know, you <laughs> yeah, working, yeah, on, yeah, a, working on a chain gang. <laughs> really, I'd rather play video games in prison than work on a chain gang. <laughs> Let's be honest. So what, what happened after the hosting company? Fi- I don't. I don't like to say it failed, but I don't know. I guess you let it crash and burn. Yeah, crash and burn. Yeah, I, you know, I would say failure would be a pretty good term for it because you know that that was a tough failure. Going from, you know, when you're so young, man, that one win, you just feel like you're, the world's your oyster. And mm-hmm. going from that to, um, it took a while for it to, to decline. It took about a year for it to to, the, to go down. Um, I, that 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 was tough. Um, going from that to that. So the next two years, I just kind of cruised off of the um, – because that, that hosting recurring com- money comes in for a long time, mm-hmm. like years, a mm-hmm. matter of years. It's not just like it just doesn't die. As long as you do a decent job, a lot of people forget about the – you know, it's $5 a month, so they sign up and they totally forget about it. Sure. So like that that, that comes in for years. So I was, cr- I was coasting off that for like two years. I was just kind of casually um, learning. You know, I didn't – you know, my, my mind was pretty shattered at that point. Because it, it, that's funny saying that, like as a 17, 18 year old, like my <laughs> mind was shattered. But um, yeah, you know what I mean? When you come off of a big loss, you, you just kind of lose confidence. 
you kind of sit around aimlessly for like a year or two. Yeah. Trying so, to figure your you, stuff out. You guys not know what I'm talking about. You guys win win all the time or No, I, I hear it, man. You like okay, your mind's okay. like in a fog, you know, and you got Yeah, fog, exactly. Yeah, maybe just not good to talk about that stuff. It's probably a good strategy. <laughs> no, no I, uh, I, dude, I totally relate. I had a I had a good year where I was in a business that was doing really, really well. I got really burnt out on the business. I actually sold the business, so I actually put some money in my bank because I sold the business and then literally had like a year where I just like wandered around aimlessly not knowing what to do next so i mean yeah. i'm like right there with you i've i've, I've had that experience before <laughs> all right good i thought it was like some kind of freak you're something. not alone all right good yeah but you know you know that you know what i'm talking about that 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 um going from so high to so low that is a, that drop is so freaking painful i don't know mm-hmm. i'm not really put it to words like articulate this into like a cohesive thought but it freaking sucks yeah well, how do you how do you how do you kind of mull out and then figure out your next steps? Yeah, exactly. Like take a step back and kind of analyze. I think is is kind of almost like a crucial thing. That, it's almost like a required thing that you have to do, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, after that, did the hosting. There was like a two three year period where I was just like, ah shit, like ah, can we cut? Can we cuss on this podcast? Yeah, do what you got to do. <laughs> man. Okay, okay. I was like, ah dang, like oh man, I just Damn. screwed all that up. So that's when I got in affiliate marketing because I noticed that some of my hosting customers were doing that. Mm-hmm. I was because because as a web host, you have to kind of go through the sites every once in a while, make sure everything's up and running. Mm-hmm. So I saw a couple of the of the customers were doing. It was clear to me what they were doing, and I was like, "Hmm, I wonder if they're making any money." So there were a couple of customers that would just keep buying more and more hosting plans. And I was like, "Damn, what are they doing?" So this was just a mental note at, at the point at the time. So I was like, "All right, affiliate marketing. That seems like a little bit less stressful in the sense that you don't have to do customer support, you don't have to ship anything. All all you have to do is focus on selling selling stuff." That's one of my strong suits. So, um, doing all like the gear, the gears, and the um, you know the daily monotonous stuff of keeping a business, the ship running straight, yeah, is really not my wasn't really my strong suit. I think most entrepreneurs can kind of uh, founders and entrepreneurs can kind of relate to this. Mm-hmm. Um, it's fun doing the new stuff and not the maintenance work. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, yeah. That, that's a that's a discussion, Joe. I think, and I have had so many times about how we get like so excited and empowered by like building shit, but then once it's built, we get bored quickly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The depression of that sits in. I know. I, I usually get depressed when that. I'm, man, sh- we're going so negative so quick here. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking hey, real, real talk. It, man. Wait, I mean, I think people can relate, though. I think that's what's important. So, is, is your your audience is um semi-experienced entrepreneurs i'd say so yeah i mean we've got a wide range of complete okay. newbies to very 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 advanced people mm-hmm. so okay so i can, i'm trying to just to uh phrase this in a way to to to, to uh appeal to the mass audience here just talk, uh, so yeah. yeah after that we did affiliate marketing then i was like uh, that was with amazon so i don't know if you guys are familiar with that mm-hmm. amazon affiliate marketing is great in the sense that you can just leverage amazon amazon's really good at at selling things that their yeah. whole network is just a buyer audience so pretty much when everyone goes to amazon they they know that they're going to buy stuff because that's just the way it works so the good thing about amazon affiliate marketing is that you just literally just get people on the site and it do, does all the heavy lifting for you mm-hmm. so that's where i started with um then i went into creating my own products this is kind of like the standard journey of a, a digital entrepreneur mm-hmm. you, know, you start you figure out the method and then you start teaching it building up your school and uh you go from there yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, I feel like, yeah, we all, we all drive to teach. Yeah. You know? I don't know what the hell it is. It's like this digital marketer thing. It's like, we got to teach what we just did. Yeah. You it's know? like, oh man, we're making all this money. Why not go teach it? And, but why would you teach it if you're making all this money? Why not more just do of it? that shit? Yeah. But it's weird. Like we've been the same way. We've always wanted to turn around and, and teach what we've learned. I think it's just like, it's an incitement factor. We get excited about what we learn and we go, oh, this is great. We got to, we got to show others this stuff. Cause it's just, we get excited easily. I think. Yeah, there there is a passion element to that. Also, the fact that you know you get paid a bunch of money that, that doesn't too. hurt either. Right. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because we actually took a like almost a reverse approach where we were selling a lot of our own products before we actually became affiliates of stuff, and then once we became affiliates of stuff, we stopped selling our own products. So now we don't actually sell any of our own info products. We're only purely affiliates now. So we actually took like a reverse approach to what the I think the common path a marketer takes is. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think there's, I think there's a, g- a good, um, I think that strategy, honestly, nowadays is probably the best thing to do because you can focus on building up your audience. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, having your own products is great and all, but if the, if you can just focus on building up an audience and delivering good content about whatever your topic is, that's, uh, I think there's a, that's where the future is going. And obviously it helps to have your own products, but 
Um, if you can just laser focus on the audience build up aspect of it, yeah, you're golden. So that's just my opinion. That's that's our opinion too. So <laughs> I like your opinion. Cool. All right, good. So, that's good to hear. So keep talking about the uh, the Amazon thing, yeah, because Amazon's badass can be bad. Yeah, Amazon's, Amazon's badass. Um, so I, I eventually found out that, that um, you know, there, there, are, there are products on there that are on Amazon, but they also end up having their own third-party affiliate programs. So there was one that I noticed was selling really well. So I was like, all right, let me see if I can find like a pro- affiliate program for this. So I found that program and I was like, oh, dang, like, you know, instead of a dollar, two dollars a sale, I'll get 50. So mm-hmm. I went I went into that. Um, and not to say that Am- Amazon's still great. I, I, I love Amazon. It's just that if you go and start looking for those third-party affiliate programs, some exist, some don't. But with a lot of the products, a fifty-dollar payout is is much better than a two-dollar payout. Obviously, mm-hmm. um, you got to be a better salesman for sure in order to get those things to convert. But it, it, it can be more profitable if you find uh, the third-party affiliate program to go along with it. Sure, that makes sense. Yeah, I guess Amazon's uh, kind of cool because you could just send people to the site maybe with one product, and you might scoop up. You know, a few products in that oh, yeah. person's order. Like I've had people with Amazon that like they'll they'll click on a link to just a book or something, and then the next thing you know, you got a commission on like a flat screen TV, and you're like, oh shit, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, the weirdest thing I got was uh, some dude bought like a horse mask and some rope. <laughs> <laughs> so I was I was thinking for about a month of what it possibly could be doing with a, a freaking horse mask and rope. The horse had a cigar in its mouth too, just to make it even weirder. <laughs> Well, I hope uh, you use your imagination it. for that. Yeah, oh, yeah, we'll leave it there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's good stuff. <laughs> so you got bored of Amazon. I don't know why you would, because you're seeing orders like that. But um. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I didn't get bored of it. Yeah. Um, it just the, you know, the the truth is that those third party affiliate programs are freaking nuts, man. Like, uh, it, it's just you know, Amazon's great for side income, and, and when you're starting off as a beginner, as far as you don't know how to you don't have to know how to sell stuff so you know like like we were saying you just send people there and they end up buying all this other crap but with yeah. the third party stuff you definitely need to have some copywriting skills you need to know how to um you need to, to know how to step people along the, the buying process and that takes time to learn so that's why i usually recommend when i train people to start with amazon start making some money to build up your confidence and you know your confidence to get traffic make sites you know, you know learn and earn at the same time mm-hmm. and then slowly learn the process of converting uh, higher ticket sales into to into affiliate commissions if you will makes perfect sense you need that you need that marketing stuff the copywriting you need to figure out how to drive traffic all that stuff yeah, yeah. so when, when did the 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 whole deadbeat um persona come about uh that was like 2009 um that's when we started on it uh at that point you know like this is just a little um you know, a little uh, secret, not a secret, but high school, I was a hard worker, you know, because I was doing this, I was doing uh, full-time school and then I was running the full-time business. Like in, I, I would do my tech support during school because I was in p- computer programming class. So I was literally working mm-hmm. like eight, 16 hours a day. Wow. It messed me up somehow. So after that, I was like, you know what? I'm not doing that ever again. I'm going to stick. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just focus on all the crap that could make me money. It doesn't take a lot of time. That's why I went to the affiliate marketing. Um, and since I had that experience, I, I boiled it all down to like two hours a day in work of work. Uh, obviously, when you start up start up the business, it's going to take like three to four hours a day, just by the nature of it. Mm-hmm. But you know, you start once you start getting that sweet spot, you can start carving you know carving off a lot of the excess fat there. I love it, man. I think you're you're throwing out some numbers that people listening are probably like, what? <laughs> I love hey, it. We, we've been doing this for 11 years now, and I still haven't figured out how to get it down to two hours a day. That's so true. that's true. <laughs> yeah, it's it's definitely a skill. That's like that's the one thing I, I I'm not good at much, but the one thing I'm good at is being like super productive in a small amount of time. So let's start talking about that then. Like, what was that shift? And and I guess talk about maybe some simple strategies that people can try out well first let, so right now your your big thing is you're you're doing most of your work on youtube these days right yeah my youtube i have a youtube channel yeah that's where uh, i have multiple youtube channels um some in my main my the one that people know me for is obviously my deadbeat super affiliate youtube channel that's where i teach everyone affiliate marketing make money online but i have a lot of niche channels too in various health um health and like home remedy Mm-hmm. And I have a good, one guitar channel, acoustic guitar channel. Ooh, interesting. So, um, yeah, YouTube's great. YouTube's great. Is that where is that where we want to go with this this uh, in podcast today? About I think so. About yeah. Is? Yeah, yeah. So, I, I, I think we should talk about YouTube. Um, now, I'm curious. When you do the YouTube stuff, you said you're in the health niches and guitar niches and stuff like that. Now, is is that actually your face and your brand and your name on that stuff? 
No, those ones I don't. Those ones I, uh, the, that's the great thing about YouTube. People think that you have to be able to like be, in, be on camera and do all this crazy crap. Like, you know, I don't know if you guys know about like Logan Paul and everyone knows about Logan Paul at this point. Mm. Like you don't need to do that crazy stuff at all to make money with Amazon. A lot of my channels are just PowerPoint slides or whiteboard videos, those style videos. Nice. Um, really just kind of like a, I like to think of it as those school presentations that you make, they made you create back in, you know, high school and college or whatever. But now like you yeah. can take those, condense it down and actually make money from it. Mm. So it's the same thing. It's really not much, much different. So, so a lot of what you do now is, is, you know, like slide presentations, PowerPoint keynote kind of things where you're just kind of walking people through something. Yeah. Screen capture tutorials. Um, screen capture works really well. Usually what I r literally just do is I fire up power PowerPoint, I make the slides and then I'll do like use Camtasia or uh, OBS is a free one. Mm -hmm. And just, I, I record the pane, the, the PowerPoint uh, presentation uh, window pane it with the, with the software and just and go through the slides one by one and just narrate it. Very cool. So talk about, um, cause that's, that's all like I built my business doing that kind of stuff too, you know, but selling stuff to clients, not affiliate. What's your flow? Like, do you have kind of like a, a flow for these videos? Uh, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's a formula to it. That's, that's what took me a, a while to figure it out. Yeah. Uh, when I first started on YouTube, I was like, man, this YouTube shit just does not work. It's just like, I'm getting views, but I'm not making sales. So it took me a while to hone in there. There's like a specific formula that you have to follow from A to Z to not only capture people's attention, but, but, like take that attention and step by step convert convert them over to wanting to buy stuff. Mm -hmm. So there's a way to do that. Um, excuse me, coffee's getting to me. <laughs> uh, so you you the the formula if that's what you're asking is you open up the video with a real catchy hook, almost like a, it's pretty much just like a sales page, but golden down to a video. You got your headline for the video, usually something very like curiosity based or. Um, you know, like this is some, I usually go from the angle, like, you know, you watch a lot of videos, but the, what I'm going to show you here today is something that you probably don't know at all, blah, blah, blah. Hmm. So I go from there, the hook. Um, so let me, let me rewind. So let's say the, the topic is, you know, um, let me just pick a random topic here. Yeah. Uh, so let's just go with like wart removal. Wart okay. removal is one of my channels. Okay. Um, it's a, it's a smaller one, but the wart, the wart removal will be like, the video will literally open up and be like, all right, so if you're here right now, uh, you probably have warts on your finger and you've tried pretty much everything. And, and what I'm going to teach you here today is probably something that you don't, that you haven't learned yet, but it potentially can work pretty well depending on, you know, how bad your wart is. So with that said, get ready. Here we go. And that's why I drop out the tips. So it'll, it'll be about two, three minutes of tips or so. And at the end of that, that's when I do my call to action to go to the website which is usually, a, it's either a, an opt-in, to go to an opt-in page, or it'll be a product review uh, page. So either one of those works. Um, what you wanna, the, if you're, the question a lot of people ask is like, when do you go for the opt-in versus when do you go for the product sale? Yeah, It depends on the niche. Um, with something like, the way I look at it is something like wart removal, and you can argue this too, that this is not, this is not the case, but something with like wart removal, since it's an embarrassing problem and it's not really passion based, like no one's going to subscribe to wart removal right, for like right. two, three years. Right. They might, but, um, so, so I, I for, but that's situation. I'm usually like, let's just go for the sale right off the bat. And I don't really, you know, obviously like you can make sales with the follow up, mm -hmm. but with those type of niche markets, I don't really care about those. So I'm just yeah. like, let's just make money. I get it. Now, I mean, the, it's an immediate with, problem. Someone's trying to solve. Yeah. Especially when it's something they want done, like done right here and now. Yeah. So, yeah, that's just that. Um, Passion-based topics, anything where someone's going to lifestyle type thing, like acoustic guitar, for example, people will, you know, some very passionate people with hobbies, any hobby thing like that, you totally want to build a list mm. because they're going to, they're going to, there's going to be a continual interest in that for that could potentially be the rest of their life. Yeah. So yeah, that's just my thoughts on that. Very cool. Now, when, so you said that you'll list out your tips on, for example, wart removal. You'll list out a bunch of tips that'll help people out, then send them over to a, a, a product. Now, where do you actually get these tips? Are these things that you're actually an expert on, or do you go in sort of research a bunch of tips, make a video around the, your research, and then go off that? Or or do you pick topics that you're already knowledgeable in? Yeah, that's a funny thing. So um, if you go to Upwork, um, it, weirdly enough, there are, there are actual like doctors on there that must just not be good with their money or something. So they need like cash constantly. Yeah. So I've hired doctors before to, to create the tips, um, nurses and stuff like that. Um, so they're out there. So I was really surprised. Like I put, I remember I put an, an ad out there to get one of my, 
Uh, usually I start to rewind here. Usually I start with like getting the ebook made and mm -hmm. I just break that down into videos. Mm -hmm. um, this That's way you smart. can repurpose it and use it forever you want. Like if you wanted to create like an Amazon Kindle book, which I've done in the past, that works. So yeah, just do that. Um, it's crazy. I guess they, they, they have some kind of, uh, just because someone uh, a doctor doesn't and they make a lot of money doesn't mean they're good at like managing their money. That's one thing I've noticed. Yeah. So um, although, you know, doctors are very, very smart people. So but it's sure. not really about intelligence, it's more about discipline and emotional state. Uh, managing money is. Right? Yeah. So, so some people just, um, I guess, you know, they haven't learned how to do it yet. So then, then they end up on Upwork, like pretty much close to broke and they need cash. Yeah. So so you'd go on Upwork and you what would you do? Would you like call them up and interview them or would you just send them a list of questions or you know what do you do once you find someone on upwork that's knowledgeable about that yeah usually what i do is i'm just like uh the, the little cover job i post what i want the job and i say I, I need someone with experience either like nurse um nurse somewhere in that field uh or i just say someone that has a lot of experience with like say you're a personal uh if you have you know some kind of issue with something and you and you and you've and you have experience with it then I'll consider you for the job. And you don't really know for sure. But then sometimes the doctors will apply and I'll be like, all right, so what are some examples of things that you've done? And then they usually post uh, articles of uh, <laughs> medical articles of things they've written. Mm -hmm. So you can verify it that way. Um, unless I guess they've stolen the doctor's identity, which is definitely a possibility because yeah. you don't really know for sure. Um, but you can tell by the, the quality of the information sure. that they kind of know what they're talking about. And then you would, you would hire them and, and then what interview them or just email them questions or what's the yeah, next I mean, process step once you find the right person? Yeah, I do recommend that you, well, I, I call it like a Skype roll, a Skype Rolodex. And I just kind of segment my Skype out by different types of outsourcers. So like some of my Skype, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, when I add the person to Skype next to it, I'll just give them a grade. Mm -hmm. after they do a job mm -hmm. so it'll be like c plus um c plus uh programmer uh, and here's his talents he he's unreliable but cheap or he's reliable I, I like people that are super reliable just going on a tangent here mm -hmm. so like reliability and speed and turnarounds more important to me than quality of the of the stuff they make mm -hmm. in my opinion mm -hmm. um, obviously there's exceptions to the rule but yeah, so I build up a Skype Rolodex. So if I find a good uh, author, if they happen to be like a doctor, I'm like, all right, let's get Skype info. And with Upwork, you're not technically supposed to do that. But um, so yeah, yeah like just don't, don't take yeah. this as an official tip here. Uh, <laughs> but it was, with Upwork, they're kind of like, you know, keep all the conversation on Upwork itself. So the problem with their voice chat thing is it sucks. It's really hard to stay in communication with people. Yeah. So uh, usually what I do is I set up a voice call over their platform and I get their Skype it or their email from there. And then connect it out outside, so it's not like there's no paper trail of that. Yeah. But you shouldn't be taking this as like you know, <laughs> this is just things that I do, you know, on the, every here every every once in a while, so to speak. So yeah. the, the rules on Upwork is you have to keep it uh, on Upwork. Right. And it's not the end of the world. Like I've I've got but um they they've they've sent me a warning before, but I think it's you know it is what it is. Maybe I shouldn't be recommending this stuff. Well, you got to be about. careful too, because I know they kind of read or they like have triggers for messages and stuff like uh -huh. that. Yeah. So yeah, because I used to do that back in the yeah, day. Yeah, I've seen animators. stuff where if like if the word email or Skype pops up in one of the messages you send to something, like sure. a little warning will pop up saying, "Hey, just want to make sure you're keeping it on up." Where dude, you gotta <laughs> it's it's same thing with like Airbnbs when they don't want you to like start calling you know homeowners and doing deals on the side. So I've like when yeah. I rented a place in Chicago, she had to code it the, like you know the symbols on top of the numbers on your keyboard uh -huh. she's like look at your keyboard this is my phone number hashtag, <laughs> hashtag blah, you know number sign so funny yeah Jeez. so yeah it's hey it's clever hey i but, did that in maui too actually we, we went around it but okay um tangent. anyway I, I, another question about the youtube channel do you typically use a, a pen name when you do this or do you do you not even bother with the name just like a channel name do, uh, how, what do you do there yeah for the channel names i, I put my keywords in there um i typically do that with, with my niche sites with um you know the like my debbie super affiliate one obviously i'm always in, in that personally Got it. um the other ones i use pen name usually hey let me back up to the upwork tip i just want right. to like just make this clear i always do all my work through upwork even though like i, I when i do con conversate with my outsourcers outside of it, i always run it through upwork anyway so it's not like i'm i'm ripping them off no. you know they're still getting paid the same exact they would for sure for so, sure well now that that's out of the way <laughs> let's go back to the youtube tip Your um, is yeah clean. so i just do uh pen name um you don't have to if you don't want to. Just some people are afraid to to be on there. So I usually just use my first name anyway. So mm -hmm. you know, I'll just you know, like Dan Waters, and I'll just change my last name on some of those. 
Mm -hmm. um, and the only reason I do that is because I don't want people, since I have a public uh, persona, I don't want people tracking down my niche campaigns and ripping them yeah. from the public. Yeah. So I usually use a pen name for that reason. Makes That's sense. the only reason. Totally. I get it. Uh, what? I'm, I'm just curious now. Okay, so we're talking about YouTube. Do you have, uh, well, you know what? Let's see. Take a step back. So we're talking about YouTube. That's your channel for basically traffic, right? Are you doing organic traffic purely? Or are you doing any ads? Uh, it's all free traffic. I'm starting. I'm, I'm. I'm finally like starting to do ads. Um, mm. Yeah. You, the great thing about YouTube is you can get insane amounts of high quality free traffic. That's like the main benefit of YouTube, and it's pretty freaking easy. Um, so I've not done any paid traffic in, 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 up to this point, but I am. I finally have got my. In order to do paid traffic, you have to have a freaking business, a, a massive business set up in the back end there to, mm. to, um, to, to recuperate the ad costs. So it's not like, you know, oh, let's just do paid ads today. You know, you have to have, you have to have stuff set up and that takes a while to set that up. So that's why, Makes um, sense. I haven't done it up until this point. Got it. So what I want to kind of do now is I want I want to sort of step all the way back and let's say somebody's listening to this and they're like, this is great. I want to go and try to sell some stuff using you know affiliate videos on youtube do you have any recommendations or tips on on just that initial setup of a youtube channel like what sort of process should they go through how should they set it up to set themselves up for the best chance of success yeah when you're when you're starting out i recommend that you go super niche market um just a good example of this would be uh instead of I'm just thinking of a good idea here I'm trying to think of something on the top of my head instead of like for toddler, here, here's a good example. Instead of doing for like a for generalized photography channel, which by the way is a great niche on YouTube, mm. you could do a, a photography for income or like uh, making money with photography. You know, it's more it's more niche down. Mm -hmm. I guess a better example of this would be um, instead of how to lose weight, you know, how to burn to get rid of fat under your arms or something like that. Like mm -hmm. a very very small segment of it. Um, as a beginner, I recommend that simply because you'll get results faster. You'll get to learn the ropes, um, and the, and the, and you can totally segment. Uh, you can totally segue out from there. Like that six pack abs channel. Have you seen that? So oh, yeah. mm -hmm. six pack shortcuts. Yeah, they all started with just six pack abs, and they worked their way out from there. So you want to kind of spearhead, I guess, is what I'm saying, in a specific uh, niche, uh, sub niche, and then once you get your once you get some territory from there, just kind of like in the game of risk. You kind of slowly but surely move your way out mm -hmm. to like adjacent territories. So if you're going really small niche like that, let's say like the wart removal example, you know how many how many videos could you make on on wart removal? It seems like you know you'd have two or three videos, and then that would be the whole channel. Yeah, that's that's the, that's kind of like where the creativity aspect comes in. So what I'll do with that, um, I also I also forgot to mention that I'll I also hire a fiber like video presenters to do things. So I'll literally just take the script for my mm. PowerPoint videos and have a video presenter literally just pretty much say the same thing back, but a different, a different style of video. Um, and you'd be surprised, like all the, all my, all my niche channels have like at least 10 to 20 videos on them. So some of them repeat some of the info, but I don't really think it's that big of a deal. Well, yeah. And you got to think people aren't usually watching every damn video in your channel. They're going to find yeah, exactly. you all different ways. That's, exactly. Yeah. I didn't mean to cut you off there. Just, uh, no, no, that's super cool. So I wanted to go back to with, uh, so you have your channel set up and all that stuff. How, how do you actually get some traffic? So you said free traffic's easy. Obviously you're not just throwing, you know, videos haphazardly up there. Do you have some tips there for SEO and grabbing some traffic with keywords? Yeah, definitely. Uh, the base of getting YouTube traffic is definitely mastering SEO. Um, so for all the people out there that master Google SEO, um, it's still, it's very similar. It's not quite the same, but it's pretty damn close. So if you have any generalized uh, SEO knowledge, you know, work keywords, you need to know how to find long tail keywords. Um, that's one of, that's one of the keys there. So uh, yeah, that's one of the keys. You want your keywords in the title, obviously making a catchy title is important. So you have to learn the art of blending key, the keyword and into the title, but at the same time, making a catchy headline. So it's not generic, like, Oh, uh, like, you know, how to mm -hmm. play acoustic guitar, you know, you do something like how to play acoustic guitar, like the pros, you know, add something catchy in there. Yes. Um, so that include the way YouTube works is it's all about kind of click through right there. So thumbnails are important, catchy title, kind of edgy title. Uh, a, a lot of the, a lot of the results come from a video that gets a lot of clicks. 
So that's kind of half the battle. The other half of the battle is making sure that you're able to keep, keep your user's attention um, throughout the whole video. So you want like a 50% on average, let's say a thousand people watch the video, at least 500 of those need to stay till about the 50% mark. Mm, so okay. yeah, that's crucial. So there's skills to that. That's kind of like a skill, but there is a systematic way to do it. It's just that uh, it, it's something you hone in over time, just like a martial art, for example, like mm -hmm. the, the, t the teacher can teach, show you how to punch, but like you have to put, make a bunch of videos to, to where that's really honed in, but you can still base it off the right form um, and have a huge advantage of that. But a lot of, there's a lot of little subtle things that you kind of pick up over time. Hmm. Makes sense. Yeah. No, that's that's killer. And so, I mean, that that's, that comes down to kind of like a lot of copywriting stuff, right? Just kind of using using wording that makes people want to know kind of what comes next, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If you if you have a good uh, grasp of SEO and copywriting, you pretty much have like ninety five percent of the equation. Very cool. <gasps> that's cool. <laughs> Very cool. That's why copywriting is important as a skill. Now, you mentioned thumbnails. Do you have any tips on on making thumbnails that that stand out? I mean, what sort of things have you seen that have worked to make people um, want to click on a thumbnail? Yeah, that's the thing about thumbnails is that it's kind of like an ever evolving thing because usually there's trends with a thumbnail and like the key to a, getting a good thumbnail to, to really work is to have it be the opposite of what everyone else is doing. Uh -huh. So right now what's working is words in the in the headline. So I mean words in the actual thumbnail. So you mm -hmm. definitely need to have words only a few words not like a whole sentence. You want you want just like the main whatever that gist of your video is about. Bam right there you want text on there. So um, that's what's working now, but I, I, my, my guess is that once every, once everyone catches on to that, which I, which are starting to, it's about, I'd say forty percent of the videos are now doing that. Um, once it starts going to the other side, let's say you got seventy percent using words, it'll probably flip flop to where because those will, those will then start blending in, and the ones that don't follow that scheme w should then stand out. Yeah, you know, you know what I mean. It's always evolving. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I see a lot of videos on YouTube these days. Maybe it's just like me and the types of videos I watch, but I see a lot of videos of like with women in bikinis and then you click on the video <laughs> to watch it. And there's like literally no, no women in the entire video. It's like a video <laughs> about like stock exchange trading and I'm stuff. Just, I'm, I'm just imagining Matt like s scrolling through the video. He's like, all right, where is that shot? <laughs> Let's find it. No, well, I watch a lot of videos on like, on like trading and investing and like uh, stock market stuff. Cause I'm, I'm a nerd about that stuff. And there's like a lot of videos in that niche that it's like, you know, how to day trade X and like the, the screenshot will be like a woman in a bikini. <laughs> and like I click on it because the title grabs me and because sure. there's a woman on a bikini. But I, I watch the video and it'll be like the whole video is a screen share video. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> That's proof of strategy. Yeah, proof of strategy. Yeah. It's click through rate, bro. Come on. It's all about the click through rates. CTR's yeah, that would technically technically be against. Uh, that's called clickbait. But what they, yeah. if you want if you want to avoid that, what they should have done is just had a quick little image of that girl on the in the thumbnail. Just have her pop up. Like, hey, if you want to get good at stock market, girls love dudes that are good at stocks. Exactly. And that's oh, it. Oh yeah, with like a little word bubble or something coming out of her mouth. Yeah, yeah. tie exactly. it in there. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, it has to it has to be in there. That's the, like that's considered clickbait if they don't do that. Uh, makes makes sense. perfect sense. Some some people that I follow are going to be in trouble soon. Then <laughs> that's yeah, it will that's eventually. Fine. Eventually, um, that that does catch up to you. And what what happens if you clickbait? You, the video gets removed. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's you got to be careful. Like it would suck to have a, how many views were on that video? Like a couple million, probably. Um, oh, I I don't know specifically. It's just something that I've seen a few times. Mm. So it would suck to lose that video. I mean, totally. those, those, those videos are assets. So mm -hmm. you have to be careful about that. So I guess talk about your assets really quick. I was just thinking about that. So you have all these videos. I mean, I'm sure that's like 90% of your assets. You know, obviously have some landing pages, it sounds like, review pages, and then what? It's the affiliate offer, right? Uh, yeah. If you want to keep it simple, that's the best way. To, that's that's what usually what I recommend for beginners. Like, Obviously, there's a huge advantage of building an email list. Um, when mm -hmm. I train people, though, uh, since I'm going after the super beginner, since everyone here is kind of on the podcast, probably like intermediate uh intermediate or at least they're not quite beginner mm -hmm. yeah uh, i'd say our average listeners probably then that intermediate level is probably the average yeah intermediate yeah that's right that's right i guess because this podcast is kind of more of an intermediate type thing mm -hmm. um the the uh where is it going oh so my youtube channel is like primarily geared towards um beginner to intermediate level i do teach i do teach a, a, a wide right i pretty much teach anything i can think of but um where I'm going with this is like when I teach beginners, I want them to just start making money as soon as possible without right. all the 
without all the hurdles along the way. So things like setting up email lists, doing email stuff, um, while that's very powerful and and the way eventually you want to go, I think my, my main goal is just to start building up confidence in people by making them get their first sales, even though it's not the most, the the 100% proper way to do it. My main goal is to get them, make them start making money right off the bat. Mm-hmm. So um, that's why I recommend just doing, if you want to keep it super simple, make your YouTube video, send it to a, re, a, re, a review page, and then let that do its work. Okay. So, um, so do you pretty much, you never really send straight to an affiliate link from a video? You, you kind of send them to a review page first? Some some people do that. The it's it's just a little bit in the gray area as far as YouTube terms of service is concerned. Um, they they have a mention about affiliate links in there, and it's not a hundred. I think they purposely keep it gray so that they can do on a case by case basis use that against you. Got it. So I, I, that's why I typically send to my own site first now what do you use for those those intermediate pages those review pages is it just a wordpress blog do you use something like a lead pages or, or you know what do you use for that yeah so uh it depends uh, some sometimes i do a custom made squeeze page or you can just use get response squeeze page or or if it's a straight up affiliate review we use wordpress okay cool simple yeah. i like to keep it simple and just the best way to do it yeah so I guess, is there anything, and I know you have a whole course on this, and we'll drop the name of that after you know we're done here, of course, or wherever you want to send them, but is there anything YouTube-related that you think you just want to get off your chest right now to something we might have missed or glossed over? Oh, man. Yeah, there's, a lot, there's a lot of stuff. Lot. Uh, <laughs> let's see here. First thing that comes to mind, I, that's like I impact. would say yeah. we, we've been talking about the PowerPoint videos it's really easy to underestimate the power of that style of presentation. I mean, I've tested this before and typically the PowerPoint videos do just about as good as the, the in-person videos, uh, if not the same. So it's wow. pretty damn close. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously like there's a benefit of being on camera. You build up your personal brand. You, people get to know your name a little bit more. You can start building up a more of a personalized, um, and, and, that, and that's an asset too. that personal brand that you build up. That's an intangible asset, but mm-hmm. The PowerPoint videos are pretty freaking freaking powerful, and, mm-hmm. and they convert really well. Especially, I think Joe, you're, you said you're um, you've done you've done videos for me in the past, so you're yeah. you're all too familiar with that style of video that I'm referring to, right? For sure. Yep. Now, yeah, is so it- they work. They freaking work well. Like, and when done right, and yeah, it's just all about the copywriting as far as keeping people's attention. You have to have the words on the screen. That helps a ton. Um, I, I could go on and on about this. Now, is there uh, is there an ideal length of video that you found? Yeah, it depends on the on the niche. Um, you know, some people just some some topics they want like a three to four minute video, just like here it is, here's how it's done, let's get it on. Mm-hmm. And the, the uh, what I found though in general, if I had to put a, a time frame on it, about ten minutes is kind of like the sweet spot. Got it. Okay. Yeah, it's one of those things you don't want to make it look overwhelming if you're just trying to remove a wart, but mm-hmm. you you don't want a two minute video where it's just some hack job, you know, video that just got thrown up there. Do you leverage Facebook advertising at all in any of your videos? Like, do you make any money from the uh, YouTube, YouTube, ad. not Facebook, the YouTube, <laughs> um, like ad, ad sense stuff. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a good, a good question. Um, I, I found with the style of markets that I go in, which are, which are like the non entertainment, like if you look at Logan Paul, he's killing it with AdSense. Mm-hmm. but even still, I found that AdSense is like less than 10% of the money that you can make off of YouTube. Mm-hmm. It went, so mm-hmm. a lot of creators, um, I went to vid summit. It was like three months ago. And this one person had, uh, she had one, I don't want to like give to get too into specifics here just for the sake of it. Um, she had like 1.5 million subs mm-hmm. and she was making like six, 7,000 a month off of AdSense. I was like, geez, Damn. my God, like you have no idea how much your money that you, you could potentially, you're, you're literally Sorry. wasting by not, not knowing these other tactics yeah. like using affiliate marketing or, um, s- selling your building up, building your email lists and all that stuff. She could 10 yeah. X that easily. Oh yeah. yeah, for sure. For that, that's probably like maybe yeah, ten x easily. Exactly. Yeah, just like ten x easily. If you were selling your own products versus affiliate products, you pretty much use the exact same process, right? Yeah, it doesn't change. It's the yep. same, same, same thing. All right. Cool. So you teased us earlier. Uh, I know Matt. This is probably in your head too. But you work two to three hours a day, and obviously, this is a big part of your day. What are like a couple of productivity tips? Because you said you're a productivity or effective monster you know you can just get shit done fast in a small amount of time um do you have some ways of how you work obviously the strategies tactics some of the youtube stuff you know does a lot of the legwork for you um, anything that you can drop 
there for the for the listeners? Yeah, uh, yeah. T- t- key number one: if you don't, if you get this wrong, you're pretty much you're not going to be able to pull this off. You need to focus on things that have scalability. And, and just a good example of this, like especially with YouTube or a lot of content marketing. Essentially, the more that you do, the more it stacks up. And with YouTube, say you you make one video. Uh, that's what that's what that's really the main reason why I went to YouTube because it, it fits this criteria. Let's say you make one video month one, so that that video can potentially drive. Uh, for my results, I've seen videos get traffic still like five seven years later. So that means that's going to continually stack up each video that that you do. So you need to you need to focus on types of businesses that allow you to create that snowball momentum. Mm-hmm. So something like that it fits that criteria. Another thing that I, that works really well for me is setting setting deadlines like if i if you get what, what i've realized is that when i have like a, a deadline of um or let me, let me rephrase this so there's this thing called a, a bucket a youtube a youtube video bucket so a lot of creators like to do this where they fill up that bucket with like 10 20 videos so that they pull from that bucket and they mm-hmm. continually refill it i usually just do it on a day-to-day basis because that's sh- that that small amount of stress of, of having to do it uh that day really um really helps me cut out all the non necessary stuff and whenever i have six months or a year to make a project that project usually really sucks mm-hmm. when i have a week to do it it just comes out like magic it's just mm-hmm. like i guess i'm really good at, at doing it like that i don't this is a skill I can't really put it to words as in now i've always been like the last minute you know in the school days you wait the night before to do the project yeah. i've always mm-hmm. been that dude oh yeah so i guess i've turned it into like an art <laughs> figured out how to make it work for well, me. you systemized it and like you said you're you're using scalable assets that compound freaking whatever sales views all that stuff yeah yeah i think joe and i are kind of the same way too we tend we to are. like oh, yeah. we know we have deadlines we'll wait till three hours before the deadline to freaking crank it out and usually we get our best work done under that kind of pressure 100 so. percent. yeah yeah, it's funny how that works. I know, I know some people like the A, the A students in life who, uh, you know, you know, what I'm talking about the people like prepare like months beforehand. Like some people thrive that way. Yeah, I don't think most entrepreneurs are like that. At least the founders and uh, entrepreneurs are just kind of uh, an erratic bunch. I think not yeah. all, but we're very erratic and need that. Um, we need that challenge and that that stress to keep us in line. Yeah, I agree. No, because uh, we get bored, man. <laughs> and if we don't, we're going to move to something else that feels like we're, our backs are against the wall or we just got to get shit done, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah back, back against the wall, exactly. Yeah, put your back against the wall. Figure out a stitch. That's the perfect way to put it. Like, figure out a way to get your back against the wall. I think it just, personally, it works better for me. Yeah. Now, are, are you are you a big reader? Do you, do you read a lot of books? Yeah, I have, I have been uh, over the last, like, two, three years. I like economics, investing, stock market, um, finance and all that boring stuff i like that stuff you sound right in line with me <laughs> that's pretty much that's what good I, stuff to know that's the stuff i read I, I learn about technical analysis fundamental analysis um i study seo pretty much all the most boring technical <laughs> topics you can think of is like what i get nerding it i nerd out on so what's a what's a good go-to book that you'd recommend there i've been i've been reading ben the one the ones i'm reading now are uh benjamin's uh, benjamin graham security analysis um that's a hard one it's been hard for me to read just that guy yeah. has a weird style of writing. Um, I just bought uh, Adam. It's Adam Smith's Wealth of Nations. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm waiting for that to come in. That's a huge one. Mm. I've, 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 I just finished up um, Thomas Solwell's Basic Economics. That was pretty good. Mm-hmm. Uh, as an entrepreneur, I think those things are important to know, even though they don't really relate to making money online. I think business-wise, it's kind of like you know where they say musicians if you learn to play the grand piano it just makes you a better musician Mm -hmm. i think that's like say you play the guitar it's like play the guitar and learn to play the freaking grand piano on the side because that that increases your overall like musician caliber i think Mm -hmm. that reading these books is the same thing yeah i agree now are there any books that um that are very super relatable to the type of stuff you do that you can recommend maybe on on specifically youtube or seo or copywriting or anything like that that you found have really helped with the, the stuff that you do I'm be honest I'll say just because the the, the style of, of this industry is it moves so fast that the books um there i guess there are some decent ones like russell brunson has some good ones um brian g johnson has a, a book on doing a youtube channel mm-hmm. but the, the nature of our business it just moves so fast that I think vi- learning through vi- YouTube, vi- like YouTube videos, um, you can learn a lot from those, especially in our mm-hmm. space. Um, 
in network and networking events. If, if uh, I, I don't recommend people go overboard with the networking events, but at least to pop in every once in a while to figure out, mm-hmm. you know, what's working for everyone. Yeah. I think those are the best strategies. Agreed. Are yeah. you coming out to San Diego uh, next month? I think for traffic and conversion. Yeah. Um, I've, I've been contemplating it. Uh, I, w- I was going to do it, but man, this, this, these, and this, uh, I get thrown off my, my game. Like, since I, I, I make all it. my money from my own activities online, you know, you know there's really not hey. much of a, a, an immediate benefit of doing the networking for me right now. Yeah. I don't know. You think I should, you think I should come? <laughs> well, we, we'd love to see you again. It but, was, you know, we live out uh-huh. here. So we're, we, I mean, we don't have tickets to the event, but we're going to be around at the hotel every day. And I think we're holding another beer event too. And we're putting on another one of our overtime beer events. So I, I know you really like the brew that we made. So yeah. <laughs> All right, sold. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. Yeah, Prob- I think I'm gonna come. Yeah, just pop it. That the traffic conversion usually is a pretty good event. Yeah, it's fun. So, um, so last kind of couple of questions. Um, what what's the the YouTube product that you have right now that that teaches all this stuff and really dives in in depth with it? Yeah, so I, I do have a YouTube uh, business system, basically teaches you A to Z from everything I talked about here. Um, you don't have to show up on camera. I know everyone's afraid of that. So that's. Uh, obviously you can, if you want, if you want to have, if you need that kind of, um, you know, that gratification, some people, people like that, you know, I, I personally don't, but if you want to show up on camera, you can, but you don't have to, I have all the strategies, uh, the templates, everything you need to build a YouTube business from scratch, regardless of your experience. Um, very, it's, and the good thing about YouTube, it's one of the few online business models where you can essentially do it for nothing. You know, obviously you need things you know, like 50 bucks to pay for, uh, you need like an autoresponder. You don't technically need it, but it'll make your, your life a lot easier. Uh, so a $15 a month autoresponder service, you need like a domain name. That's it. It's really all just uh, intellectual capital. So mm-hmm. that's the one thing I like about YouTube. And with that said, even though there is, um, you know, it's good to be in a business that has a, a barrier of entry, but it's not too high for the average person to get in. The thing about YouTube is a lot of people have this misconception that it's harder than it really is. So that's what keeps out the average person. Um, so yeah, I teach that all in my Tube Tycoon system. That's tubetycoon.com. Um, nothing left out. Everything regardless of your experience. If you're a lot of people are like, oh my God, I'm ugly, bro. So I can't do videos. <laughs> doesn't matter what you look like. You don't even have to really speak English that well either. So That's true. They already get hired people on Fiverr for cheap. Yeah, yeah for sure. Fiverr is a great resource. It still is. And what's yeah. your, what's your main YouTube channel that you like uh, like to send people to watch? Yeah, so my 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 Deadbeat Super affiliate. It's Deadbeat Super affiliate. You can just get there by going to youtube.com slash Deadbeat Super affiliate. So that's where I teach everything from affiliate marketing, make money online, do a little bit of copywriting stuff. I know you guys are much more into copywriting than me. Um, so maybe we need to do like a collab or something. <laughs> can, I know people ask that. about that. We'll be a special guest. Shows up every yeah, now and then. Yeah, I'm down if you guys want to come in. I can. Uh, that could be fun. Yeah. All right. Cool. Let's all do right. it. Nice. I'm yeah. writing it down. Yeah. Thanks Very for cool. having me on, guys. I appreciate that. Yeah, and we'll we'll link up all, all this stuff in our show notes too. So if you uh you know you you search for Dan Brock or Deadbeat Super Affiliate on our our uh, website, you'll you'll find his show notes and find all the links to this stuff as well. Yeah. So thanks so much for for joining us, this and uh, it's been it's been awesome. Yeah, man. Yeah, Thank you, Dan. Fun. Thank you, guys. All right, buddy. See you. See you. All right. Thank you. And I hope you just enjoyed this episode you just listened to. Now, right now, before we sign off, I have a few things I would love for you to do. So the very first thing is to go find our guest on Facebook and tell them that you loved their episode with us. That's going to help them uh, just feel good about themselves, but also uh, it's going to spread the word a little bit more for us. So go find them on Facebook. Everybody's on Facebook and go say that you love their episode and maybe one cool thing that you learned there. The second thing is to go to iTunes and subscribe to our podcast. Just look up Hustle and Flow Chart and hit the subscribe button. And the very last thing, the third thing, is to leave us a review on iTunes or wherever you're listening to this podcast and help us spread the word more. That's how more people are going to get uh, this awesome knowledge, this, this cool podcast training, and a whole bunch of other cool free training that we give out at evergreenprofits.com. So that's about it. Go find them on Facebook, go subscribe on iTunes and leave us a review. You would be amazing if you did that, but you're always amazing. So thanks for listening and we'll catch you in the next episode.